about something else. Give me Exodus 20, verse 2. Exodus 20 and 2. Bring it out. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Uh huh. Out of the house of bondage. Out of the house of what? Bondage. What is bondage, my brother? Slavery, right? So the Lord said, I am the Lord thy God, that have brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, out of slavery. Now go back to 68. Book of Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Bring it out. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So the Lord said, I'm going to bring my people into slavery again. Read. With ships. With airplanes. With ships. With a bicycle. With ships. We will drive here. With ships. How do we get to America? With ships, right? So the Lord has given us the prophecy that this would happen to the children of Israel. He said that his people would go into slavery with ships. And who was he talking to again? And who's, who's, his, who's his people? The Israelites, ah, brother. Read. Thou shalt see it no more again. We haven't been back to our homeland ever since. Read. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. And when we got off those boats, when we got off those ships, who were we sold to? That's what the Bible says. He says, but the Bible calls them what? That's what he says. Read. For bondmen, for slave men, read, and bondwomen, and slave women, read, and no man shall buy you. And in the Hebrew, that buy here means redeem, because nobody came to get us. Why? Because the Lord is going to send his son, Hamashiach Yahawashai, to redeem us. Now watch this now, Luke chapter 21, start at verse 20. I appreciate your patience, brother. All praise to the most high. I really, I really appreciate your patience. The Bible says his sheep hear his voice. You'd be surprised how many people walk by and give us, flip us the bird and spit at us, cuss us out. And, you know, Luke, Luke 21, start at verse 20. This is the book of Luke, chapter 21, and verse 20. Huh? The words of the Lord. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. So this is Hamashiach Yahushai, who the world calls Jesus Christ ignorantly. He's telling his children, when you see these Roman soldiers come into the land of Jerusalem, Know that the destruction of the temple is near. That's the desolation that it's talking about because they came in and destroyed our temple. Read. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. So the Lord said, those who are in Judea, in the land of Israel, flee. When the Romans came in, Christ is telling everybody, all his children, get up out of here because they're going to do you dirty. They're going to take you captive and kill you, rape your women, they're going to do you guys really dirty. So flee to the mountains. What mountains is he talking about, though? Keep reading. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. Now give me Micah chapter 4, verse 10. Because these mountains that it's talking about, brother, is Africa. This is how we got into Africa. Micah verse four, or chapter 4, verse 10. This is the book of Micah chapter 4 and verse 10. Uh -huh. Be in pain. And labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion. The daughter of Zion, that's the Israelites, read. Like a woman in travail, for now shalt thou go forth out of the city. So this was a, a, a prophecy from the prophet Micah here. The same thing that Christ is saying. He's validating what Micah is saying. He said that we would have to go out of the city, meaning Israel or Jerusalem, read. And thou shalt dwell in the field. In the field, the mountains, meaning Africa, read. And thou shalt go even to Babylon. And when we left from Africa, where did we go? America. The Bible calls it Babylon. This is the virgin daughter of Babylon. The great whore that the Bible speaks of. This is the melting pot, the most evil place on earth. The Lord said that we would come here, first leave Jerusalem, then go to Africa, then America. Read. There shalt thou be delivered. There the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemy. Thine enemy, the same enemy that when we got off those boats, this land, okay? So the Lord said this is where he's going to send his son to redeem his children is from America. Revelation 12, verse 6. God. Revelation 12, verse 6. And then give me Revelation 1, verse 13. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 12, and verse 6. Bring it out. And the woman fled into the wilderness. And the woman that it's talking about here is Israel. Remember, we are the bride in Jesus' room. So the woman is talking about is Israel. We fled into the wilderness. Is the same, the same wilderness here is the mountains and the field. The same context in Luke 21 and Micah chapter 4. Read. Where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her 
There are 1,203 score days. And a day is a year, okay? So 1,260 years. So have you ever heard of the diaspora or 70 AD, what happened in Rome, or in Israel when the Romans came in and they, we had to flee and um, we went, some of us went into Europe and that's where you get the Moors from, but the majority of us went into Africa. Are you, are you familiar with the diaspora? Here, get that real quick um, in the Compact Bible Dictionary. Desolation, abomination, abomination, desolation. So we fled from Israel into Africa and we came to this land. This is where we're going to be redeemed from. This is the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary's definition of abomination of desolation. Bring it out. Meaning the abomination that desolates or appalls. When Daniel in prophecy try to describe an abomination so abhorrent and loathsome to all moral and religious de decency excuse me, as to leave its abode desolate. He used this term, Daniel 9 and 27, 11 and 31, and 12 and 11. Many scholars hold that Yahawashai, Jesus, prophesied that his followers would see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place Matthew 24 and 15 was fulfilled when Jerusalem was destroyed in the year AD 70, 70 AD under uh, Titus and Vespasian the the Romans when they came in they they conquered us and we had to get up out of Israel so this is true history so um, now give me Revelation chapter 1 verse 13 Revelation 1 and 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So the Lord said that his son, his hair on his head and on his face was white in color and woolly in texture. Does that guy have white woolly hair? Absolutely not. Read. Uh, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his eyes as a flame of fire, because it was prophesied in Genesis 49 that his eyes would be red with wine, because it was customary for the Jews to drink wine. They even called Christ a wine bibber. He wasn't a drunk, but what was his first miracle? He turned water into wine. So when a brother's eyes, when he drinks wine, the whites of his eyes turn red. This was a prophecy. As simple as that may sound, but that's what it means. And his feet like unto fine brass. So the Lord said his feet is like fine brass. What color is brass? Brown. It's a derivative of brown. But not only was he brown, how brown was he? Read. As if they burned in a furnace. Now if you put anything in a furnace, what color is it going to turn? Dark brown. So let me ask you something. You play baseball in your life? Football. Football. Okay, but you understand three strikes you out, right? So that was three things that we just listed that don't add up with this guy, yeah. right? But does that add up with this description? Yeah. And that's what the Bible says our Lord and Savior actually looked like. That's right. Read Hebrews 7 and 14. And I'm going to show you that you are the real Jew, my brother. That you are the real Judah, the tribe of Judah. The same right. blood in your veins is the same blood in Jesus Christ's veins. Uh, Hebrews 7 verse 14. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, and verse 14. Bring it out. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. What does it mean, it is evident? What does the word evident mean? Factual, right? So the Lord said, it is evident that our Lord sprang out of the tribe of Judah. Huh. Read. Of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. Because he's in the order of Melchizedek, the priesthood of Melchizedek. Now give me Jeremiah 14 and 2. So Christ came from the tribe of Judah. There's 12 tribes of the house of Israel. I don't know if you're familiar with that. So the word Israel isn't just the name of a land. It is actually the name of a man. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jacob's name was renamed to Israel. That's Genesis 35 and 10 and Genesis 32 and 28. The Lord renamed Jacob to Israel. And Israel had 12 sons. And that's why it's called the 12 tribes of the house of Israel. And Christ came from the fourth son, the tribe of Judah. 
Jeremiah 14, verse 2. Let's see what it says about Judah. So we just read the description. Well, let's get more. Let's expound on it. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, and verse 2. Bring it out. Judah mourneth. Judah mourneth. The Lord said that the real Jews, because that's where the word Jew comes from, is Judah. It says they're in mourning. They're going through it as a people. Read. And the gates thereof language. Our, we don't have no true leadership. We have Martin Luther King, but he didn't really get us nowhere. Malcolm X tried, but he didn't really get us nowhere. You know, we have all these people trying to stand up for us, but we don't have no real leadership. This is what the Lord is saying. The gates there of language, meaning we don't have no power structure. We don't have no economic might, political might, or military might. Read. They are black unto the ground. They are what? They are black unto the ground. Now that goes with what we just read in Revelation about the description of Christ, the tribe of Judah. What tribe he's from it is evident that he's come from this tribe and the bible says the tribe of judah they are black unto the ground read and the cry of jerusalem is gone up so why does it say they are black unto the ground genesis 2 verse 7. it's real simple brother but we've been lied to for so long in this society and brainwashed and, and, and colonized to think whatever our oppressor has taught us is true but we got to wake up. In the last days, he said that he's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. And now we're starting to understand it. Um, Genesis 2, verse 7. Shalom, brother. You got a minute for the word of God? You got a minute for the word of God? Please take a flyer, brother. All praises from both sides. So we're trying to... All right, all right. Hey, you an Israelite, most likely, brother. We got to wake up in these last days. Uh, all right, bring that out. Genesis 2, verse 7. Come on, brother. I forgot, I forgot to give you a flyer. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, King. Genesis 2, verse 7. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 2, and verse 7. Bring it out. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. So the Lord said he formed man of the dust of the ground. What color is the dirt? Brown. Brown. Now go back to Jeremiah 14 and 2. Uh, Jeremiah 14 and 2. Bring it out. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof language. Uh -huh. They are black unto the ground. So God's chosen people have always been black unto the ground so even our hispanic and native american brothers and sisters the further you go back the darker they get uh, but we're all mixed up all over the place now that's why we're all these different shades of brown right uh, but the lord said his children have always been the so-called black hispanic and native american men but we've been lied to give me um give me uh deuteronomy 7 verse 6 because uh, this is what the lord said about you elijah right elijah this is what the lord said about you elijah Deuteronomy 7, verse 6. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, and verse 6. Uh -huh. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord said, you are a holy people. You know what the word holy means? You hear it all the time, holy, right? Yeah. But what's the actual definition of yeah, it? Not the actual definition. Sanctified or set apart. So the Lord said, you are a set apart people. Remember, he said that... You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Remember, we read that in Amos. So he said, you are a set-apart people. Read. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people. He said that you, brother, are a special people, and you are chosen. This is what the Lord is telling you. Read. A special people unto himself, uh -huh. above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Now, that doesn't sound like equality to me. The Lord said that he chose a certain people to be above all people that are upon the face of the earth. And it just so happens to be, my brother, that's who you are. So why are we suffering as a people? As we brought out earlier, it's because the curses. We've been stripped of our heritage because we broke the agreement. So what must we do now to come back? Give me Hosea 5 and 15. Zechariah verse 1 and 3. Hosea 5 verse 15. This is the book of Hosea chapter 5 and verse 15. Bring it out. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense. The Lord said he, he returned to his place because we turned our back on him. So we have to turn back to the Lord. He said he's going to go to his place until we acknowledge our offense, until we confess our faults. Read. And seek my face. So we got to seek him. Um, Zechariah 1 verse 3. And then give me uh, Acts 3 and 18. Zechariah 1 and 3. Therefore say thou unto them, thus saith the Lord of hosts, uh -huh. turn, turn ye unto me, saith the Lord of hosts. The Lord said, we got to turn back to him, brother Reed. And I will turn unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. And he says, once we turn back to him, then he's going to turn back to us. You see, the world will have you to think that we're waiting on God. But 
contrary, the Bible actually says he's waiting on us. So what do we have to do? Acts 3, verse 19. This Psalms 19 and 7. This is the book of Acts, chapter 3 and verse 19. Bring it out. Repent ye, therefore, and be converted. The Lord said we must repent. we got to repent in these last days because his son is coming very soon. We must repent and convert. What does it mean to convert? Change. So we got to change. we got to repent and convert. Read. That your sins may be blotted out. That our sins may be blotted out. Psalms 19, verse 7. Psalms 19 and 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. The law of the Lord. The law, statutes, and commandments. Read. Converting the soul. Doing what? Converting the soul. Making the change. This is how we repent, is by coming back to the laws of God. So a lot of these churches are teaching that you don't have to keep the laws. But is that what the Lord said? Let's see. Give me Matthew 5, verse 17. Let's see what Hamashiach Yahweh said. Because a lot of people say, all you got to say is, Jesus loves me, this I know. That's not accurate, though. That's deception from Satan himself. Matthew 5, verse 17. Matthew 5, verse 17, the words of the Lord. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. So Yahweh said, don't let it cross your mind. I didn't come to destroy the law. Read. Or the prophets. Or what the prophet said. Read. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. But to fulfill. So right there, a lot of these pastors would stop right there and say, see? He, he came to die for you, and that means you can just break the law and just do what you want now, and Jesus just, he came to save you, and that's just how, what it is. That is not what he's saying here. So what did he fulfill? Acts 3.18. Keep reading. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass. Is heaven and earth still here? We're walking on earth right now, right? He said, until heaven and earth pass. Read. One jot or one tittle. One comma or one period. Uh-huh shall in no wise pass from the law. He said it ain't going nowhere. His law, statutes, and commandments are still valid and present to this day. We got to obey what thus saith the Lord. Read. Till all be fulfilled. Until all be fulfilled. Has Christ came back again? No. So now everything hasn't been fulfilled. Read. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so. So whoever is breaking the laws of God in telling people that they could break the laws of God, read. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. The Lord said they're going to be called the least in the kingdom of heaven, read. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So the Lord said, but those who keep the commandments and teach the commandments, those people are going to be called great in the kingdom of heaven, James 2 and 17. Uh -huh. Acts 3 and 18. Let's see what Christ fulfilled, though. Because a lot of people see that word, and they think that's a free pass to sin. That's not what Christ is saying. Acts 3, verse, eight, uh, verse 18. Acts 3 and 18. But those things which God before had shewed by the mouth of all his prophets, that Hamashiach should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. He hath so fulfilled. He fulfilled what the prophets and what Moses said about his coming, that he would come and die on the cross. That's what he fulfilled. His suffering, dying for our sins. Not to say you could keep sinning. That's not what that's saying. So he came and fulfilled the prophecies of him coming and dying on that cross. Um, James 2, James 2, 15, verse 17. Excuse me, hey, we bring out the word of God, man. James 2, verse 17. This is the book of James, chapter 2, and verse 17. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. It's not enough to just believe. The Lord said we got to have works with the belief. James says faith without works is dead. Everyone's heard that scripture. So we got to understand what he's telling us. He said we must believe and it's going to solidify our belief by our obedience. By obeying his voice. John 10 verse 27. John 10 verse 27. This is the book of John chapter 10 and verse 27. It reads... These are the words of the Lord. My sheep hear my voice. What the Lord say? My sheep hear my voice. The Lord said his sheep is going to hear his voice, my brother. Read. And I know them, and they follow me. And they follow him. Give me second John, or first John chapter 2, verse 6. So what does it mean to follow him? First John chapter 2, verse 6. <laughs> this is the book of first John chapter 2 and verse 6. Uh -huh. He that saith he abideth in him on himself also, so to walk. Even as he walked. We got to walk just like Christ walked. Did Christ keep the commandments? Absolutely. Perfectly. So the Lord said we got to follow that example. 
We can't break the laws of God and think thinking that we're in relationship with him. Jump up to verse 3. This is John, 1 John chapter 2 and verse 3. Uh -huh. And hereby we do know that we know him. And this is how we know we have a relationship with the Lord, my brother. Read. If we keep his commandments. If we do what? If we keep his commandments. And this is how we can uh, validate our relationship with the Lord is if we are obeying his voice. Read. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar. What is he? Is a liar. The Lord said, we are lying if we say we have a relationship with him, but disobeying his word. Read. And the truth is not in him. And the truth is not in him. So what is the truth? What is the truth? Because remember, Christ said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So what is the truth, brother? Let's get it for the brother real quick. Psalms 119, 142. 119, 142. Can I share a couple laws with you real quick? All praise, all praise. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 119 and 142. Bring it up. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. How long? An everlasting righteousness. So the Lord's righteousness is everlasting. It's forever. Read. And thy law is the truth. What is the truth? And thy law is the truth. The law, statutes, and commandments. That's what's going to make us free, is obeying the laws of God. They are never done away with, contrary to popular belief. we got to obey the voice of the Lord. He says, those who say they know him and keep not his commandments, they are a liar, and the truth is not in him. So let me share a couple laws with you, brother, because you are an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. You are God's chosen people, and we must repent in these last days as a nation. Otherwise, we're going to continue to be oppressed. And we're going to uh, prolong our Messiah's coming. we got to repent in these last days. So give me um, Exodus 20, verse 8. We'll start there. Uh, Exodus 20, verse 8. You know what today is? It's a Sabbath day, brother. Are you familiar with the Sabbath? Okay, let's see what the Lord said about the Sabbath. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20, and verse 8. Now remember, he said his laws are not done away with. They're not at all. Read. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. He said to keep it holy. Remember the word holy means to set apart. He said set this day apart uh, other than other days. It's, it's not supposed to be like a normal business day. This is a holy day. Read. Six days shalt thou labor mm -hmm. and do all thy work. Read. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. He said, but the Sabbath day is the, is the or slack, the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Today is the Sabbath day, not Sunday. That got instituted by the Roman Catholic Church. Okay, even if you look on your calendar right now, you'll see that Sunday is actually the first day of the week. Saturday is our biblical Sabbath, my brother. Okay? Uh, in it thou shalt not do any work. He, thou, says that, he said we're not supposed to work on the Sabbath. Read. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, uh -huh. nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. So this is the stipulations. This is the rules and regulations to the Sabbath day. The Lord said we can't work. Nobody within our gates can work. This is a day that we rest or fellowship or bring out the word of God. Read. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, uh -huh. the sea, and all that in, and all that in them is. Read. And rested the seventh day. He rested every day. And rested the seventh day. And that he's our example. He rested the seventh day. So we must rest in the Lord. Now give me Nehemiah 10 verse 31. Nehemiah 10 verse 31. The Lord sent you up here today, brother. Give me that real quick in Proverbs 20, 24 so he can see that real quick. I know it's hot standing out there in that sand. Oh, no, no. Okay, I'll pray. Proverbs 20 verse 24 real quick before you get that. Proverbs 20 and 24. Man's goings are of the Lord. The Lord said man's goings are of the Lord. Read. How can a man then understand his own way? How can a man understand his own way? The Lord is directing your steps. He stopped you. He wanted you to hear this. Because he, he, he got something for you. He, he's calling you. That's why the Bible says many are called but few are chosen. So now you got to answer that call. Remember Revelation 3 and 20. The Lord said I stand at the door and knock. You gotta let him in. You gotta let you let him in and come sup with you, come eat with you, give you this word. Man cannot live by bread alone. So that word is that food. We gotta we gotta soak up that word. Nehemiah 10 verse 31. Uh, 
This is the book of Nehemiah, chapter 10, and verse 31. Nevertheless, for thy great mercies, sake. This is the book of Nehemiah, chapter 10, and verse 31. Salaki. And if the people of the land bring where aboard any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, that we would not buy a bit of them on the Sabbath. So we're not, do, we're not supposed to do no buying or selling on the Sabbath day either, brother. This is a commandment of the Lord. So no working and no buying or selling. So give me Leviticus 19, verse 27. Tell them on, brother, you got a minute for a word of God? Yeah, All praise to the most high. So right now, we're teaching our brother who he is, that he's not just a black man, he's an Israelite from the tribe of Judah, and that we must keep the laws of God. We must repent in these last days. So if you don't mind me asking, what's your nationality on your father's side? My father's side? Yeah. Black. black man, okay. All right, so why do I ask on the father's side? Um, let me show the brother real quick, because you probably wonder why do I say on the father's side? You go, brother. Numbers 1, verse 18. Numbers 1, verse 18. So just like I just asked the brother, he said the same thing, African, American, and black. Where did those terms come from? Does anybody look like the color of my shirt? No. No. So why do we call ourselves black? They called us that, right? Yeah. So why do we call ourselves African American? Where'd that term come from? So we're African and American. Exactly. We're two continents. Exactly. That's what they that's what they tell us. So let me give you a little quick backdrop, just like I told the brother just a minute ago. The word Africa comes from a Roman general by the name of Scipio Africanus, a white man who conquered the northern parts of Africa during the Punic Wars about three hundred